On this episode of O'Fallon Matters, see how police officers are learning critical life-saving methods, discover a city department that can help with any request, and find out how O'Fallon was named a POW MIA city. All this and more next on O'Fallon Matters. Welcome to this episode of O'Fallon Matters. The O'Fallon City Council recently voted to put Proposition 1 on the April ballot. Joe Meyer is here with information to help explain this important issue. When you go to the polls on Tuesday, April 7th, you'll have the opportunity to vote on Proposition 1, which would increase funding to the O'Fallon Police Department and road improvements. The funds would come from a use tax placed on items purchased from out-of-state retailers. Did you know that many Missouri cities and most states already have a use tax? O'Fallon is one of the few cities nationally without it. In Missouri alone, more than 105 cities, including Wentzville, Forestell, and St. Charles County, have a use tax. So Proposition 1 would give the city the ability to institute a use tax. And what a use tax is, is basically when you go to the store and you buy something, you pay sales tax on that item. But if you buy something from out of state, either over the internet or through a catalog or something like that, you may not pay the sales tax on it. So there's, the city doesn't collect that 2% sales tax that they would if you went to the local store and bought it. The use tax basically reinstitutes that portion of the tax so that you're paying the same whether you buy it online from out of state or you buy it at the store right down the street. The Missouri Municipal League estimates O'Fallon would collect approximately $3 million per year if the use tax is approved by voters. One of the things that we're facing as a challenge as a city as we continue to grow is our revenues aren't going to keep growing at the same level that our population is growing and our needs are growing. Our city's aging. A lot of our infrastructure is aging. So the costs are growing, going up and our revenues, although they continue to increase, are not increasing at the same rate. So when you, we look at possibilities for additional funding that are out there, there's really not a lot of options. If Proposition 1 passes, the city has actually written the ballot language to ensure that the money is going to go to specific items that the city council dictated. And those items are going to be first to the police department. Um, we have some specific needs we've identified currently that the police department needs, mainly in terms of technology upgrades. We're looking at uh, advancing our technology, you know, uh, body cams, dash cams, which would be a priority. We're also looking at replacing our current CAD system, which is a computer-aided dispatch system. Our current system is about 20 years old. Technology is far more advanced than what it was back in the 90s, and we need to catch up with that. Our public now watches crime TV shows like never before, and they know that technology is available. Our juries now have that expectation. You know, they want to see the interactions with a police officer. It's not that our officers have lost credibility, but it just that adds credibility to their testimony if they have the interaction video and audio recorded. Lastly, we need to continue to evaluate our staff and see if we need to increase our staff. That's an ongoing process. We want to make sure that we have enough staff to provide a good quality service to the citizens of O'Fallon. Any additional funds that the police department doesn't need would go to the streets department and would be used to upgrade city streets, specifically subdivision streets, where we could increase the number of concrete slabs we're replacing or increase the number of asphalt overlays that we're doing. Keep in mind that voter approval is necessary for the city of O'Fallon to receive local use tax revenue on goods purchased for use in the city from out-of-state and online vendors. The use tax only applies when out-of-state purchases total more than $2,000. Purchasers will not pay both a sales tax and a use tax on a transaction. 
the use tax rate will always be the same as the sales tax rate, which is currently 2%. The use tax would go up or down with the sales tax rate. At no time can local use tax and local sales tax be collected on the same transaction. The use tax will be on the ballot as Proposition 1 on April 7th, and we just encourage all of our residents to research this thoroughly, take a look at our website. We have a link on there that you can really take a look and kind of get into the details of what a use tax is and how it will impact you. And, and go to the polls and make the decision that's best for you and your family. O'Fallon was recently recognized for its tireless commitment to our community's veterans. O'Fallon TV's Brett Figgis is here to explain how our hometown became a POW MIA city. When we say veteran, what comes to mind? Valor? Courage? Service? How about sacrifice? Throughout our nation's long history, the members of our armed forces have dutifully served our country and sometimes paid the ultimate price to protect our country's values. And our community has long honored that faithful sacrifice. At monuments like the Omer J. Dames War Memorial in Dames Park, or services and ceremonies at the Veterans Memorial Walk. And at the tail end of last year, our city's ongoing support for veterans was rewarded with a special honor. The mission of the Jefferson Barracks POWMI Museum is to reverently honor all who served our country in any branch of the military, uh, who were captured by enemies of the United States or who went missing in action from any conflict and from any year. Uh, as part of this mission and in an effort to raise POWMI awareness across the nation, the museum established the POWMI city and POWMI county programs. In alignment with this mission statement, the fundamental requirement for a city to become a POWMI city is to actively participate in helping to raise POW-MIA awareness. Now therefore, by majority consent, the Jefferson Barracks POW-MI Museum Board of Directors does hereby proclaim the city of O'Fallon as a POW-MIA city and encourages the citizens of the city of O'Fallon to continue showing their appreciation for the sacrifices made by our nation's POWs and MIAs, along with their families, in the defense of American liberties and values, and witness whereof this 24th day of October, 2019. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for being here. This honor is the culmination of months of work by the O'Fallon Veterans Commission, which included phone interviews and an in-person presentation at Jefferson Barracks by Commission members Sheldon Hartsfield and John Roth. But during the process, our commissioners discovered that our hometown's reputation had preceded them. Uh, one of the most encouraging things uh, during the phone interview was that once I mentioned that we were with the city of O'Fallon, they were immediately knew everything that we had done it wasn't like I really had to explain who we were. They knew who we were. So that made the matters um, easier. Because the city has the reputation that it does, you know, we're named one of the best cities for veterans in the country. A lot of the other accolades, our memorial has received national accolades. I guess in an afterthought, I wasn't surprised that we were as known as we were. So as we got deeper into the process, it became easier and easier. And we are uh, city number 34. O'Fallon earned its POW MIA city status for ongoing efforts to honor and recognize those who served our country and those who remain missing in action. And as part of that mission, the O'Fallon Veterans Commission is proud to announce our National Vietnam War Veterans Day, which will be held on March 29th at the St. Charles County Veterans Museum. This ceremony will focus on education for the community with a traveling display of memorabilia courtesy of Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 458, along with all the other incredible exhibits available at the museum. And after that, our veterans have even more plans for O'Fallon. Outside of the normal programs that, that we normally do uh, this year, our next step for recognition for the city is the Purple Heart City. And we've already started the process on that and the commission is working on a service dog program where we can provide veterans in the community who are qualified to receive a service animal, not a support dog, a service animal, there's a difference, 
will they be able to get one fully trained free of charge? So we're working with some uh, local businesses here in the area to get the dogs trained and hopefully this year we'll be able to start that service. As part of our commitment to veterans, O'Fallon offers a number of resources. By heading to www.ofallon.mo.us slash veterans, you can get a quick overview of some of what we have to offer, including the services offered by our Veterans Assistance Office in City Hall. O'Fallon is proud of the service of our veterans, and earning recognition as a POW MIA city is just another way to prove that we will not forget the courage and sacrifice of our service members. Next on O'Fallon Matters, our police officers are learning how to stop traumatic bleeding by training in several life-saving techniques. Let's see how the Stop the Bleed program is benefiting our officers. O'Fallon police officers patrol our streets with a purpose to keep us safe. Most patrols are routine. Officers respond to calls and then their shift ends. But every now and then an emergency happens. An active shooter situation may occur or an angry citizen might shoot an unsuspecting officer. These situations can end with serious gunshot wounds. We've all seen it happen too often on the news or in everyday life. Now, the city of O'Fallon's police department is taking a proactive step by teaching officers to become immediate responders by learning how to stop heavy bleeding. Because the source of bleeding is gonna be that artery. The Stop the Bleed program began in 2012 after the Sandy Hook incident, and it was created as an initiative to reduce traumatic death uh, wherever we could. And so it's a program, a national program, that's been endorsed by the American College of Surgeons, and it's being rolled out to the public and to school districts nationwide to try to prevent traumatic death. Several members of the O'Fallon PD recently took part in Stop the Bleed training. By learning how to stop the bleed, officers are gaining the ability to recognize life-threatening injuries and packing act quickly the, and effectively the, the to control bleeding. You take a one-hour class, it's very easy, um, very doable by anyone. Um, the class is broken down and explains each step of the way. Death by bleeding is very preventable um, and it should be second nature just like CPR is. Yeah, so. it's, uh, something that's very easily if equipped properly and it's, it stays lost. You know, wrap your, your partner's arm, your leg, whatever it may be. So what stops bleeding? In a Stop the Bleed course, officers learn three quick techniques to help save a life. They learn how to apply pressure to a wound, how to pack a wound, and how to correctly apply a tourniquet. All three techniques empower our officers to assist in an emergency and potentially save a life. And once officers take the Stop the Bleed course, they become empowered to make a life or death difference when bleeding emergencies happen. Where this has been implemented in different states so far, it's generally being used in daily life, uh, car accidents, uh, construction accidents. So this is a life skill much like CPR that can benefit anyone. So now O'Fallon Missouri Police Department has approximately 30 instructors trained in the Stop the Bleed program and they can roll this out to the public as needed. You can go to bleedingcontrol.org and on there you'll find a list of the classes that are available in your surrounding areas. As hard in the bottom as you can. Simple as that. Now that spring is finally arriving, let's check in with our project management team to see how our crews are improving your commute. Here at the engineering division for the city of O'Fallon, we take a lot of pride in the roadways in the city of O'Fallon. We do our best to maintain the infrastructure that we have. We try to make residents commutes fast and safe. So in 2020, we've got a lot of great projects coming up that we hope will improve the existing infrastructure and help people get to where they need to go faster and safer. One of our big projects this year is Bryan Road Phase 3. So that will take place from Great Warrior Drive down to Fizey Road. And what we're going to be doing there is replacing any deficient concrete slabs, as well as replacing any sidewalk issues that we may have to make, them, make sure that those are ADA compliant. The main intent of the project is to ensure that uh, each side of Bryan Road adequately drains during rain events. We've had some issues with that in the past, and this project is designed to make sure that we repair all those issues that need to be taken care of, as well as make sure that everybody's commute is safe so that there aren't any standing puddles and that water sheds effectively from the, from the roadway. 
Another road project that we've undertaken this year is Hoff Road. So we're going to be widening Hoff Road to include two foot shoulders on each side, as well as reducing the severity of a curve uh, once you get past the train tracks, essentially, to help make it a little bit safer for some of the larger vehicles that use that, like the trash trucks and some of the semi trucks that use that road. The project is currently ongoing at Hoff Road. Uh, we have successfully managed to install, we've completed probably about 75% of it. We have about 25% yet to go that should be completed in spring 2020. The final project I'd like to highlight today is Guthrie Road. So we'll be installing a four-way signalized intersection at the intersection of Mexico Road and Guthrie Road. We'll also be realigning Guthrie Road to help ease some of the sight distance concerns as well as make it a little bit safer for drivers who are traveling along the curve, kind of as you're going northward more towards where the county boundary ends. The estimated timeline for this project is that we will be installing the signal work in 2020. We expect to start, begin, begin the roadway construction uh, in early 2021. And finally, as we do every year, we'll be uh, completing the annual programs throughout the city. So we'll be replacing deficient concrete slabs and overlaying asphalt streets that need to be repaired in residential subdivisions throughout the city. If anyone would like any more information regarding these or other projects that we have in the city, feel free to contact the engineering department here at City Hall or go on the city's website. If you have questions about city services or a simple request, this city department can help get the answers you need. Are you confused about a city service? Unsure where or when to pay that utility bill? Don't worry, because the City of O'Fallon offers residents a helpful service that can answer your questions and requests. We do get a lot of residents that come up to pay utility bills or they have other business at City Hall and they'll stop by the Citizens First Desk uh, to talk to uh, one of our customer service reps about an issue they may have in their subdivision, whether that be a, um, a pothole or, or something wrong with the street or a code enforcement issue. So we're available in, in many areas. Citizens First representatives are knowledgeable and can direct you in the right place. So when you call City Hall, you'll reach us here at Citizens First. Um, we'll listen to your concern or your issue that you may have. We try to help you ourselves as best that we're able to um, in the instance that we cannot. Um, we try to either direct you in person or over the phone to the correct person or department that can assist you. Besides speaking with a representative directly, Citizens First offers online tools that can help visitors make requests or learn about the many fantastic services the city offers. We also have our Citizens First Center online, um, which is a great tool for our residents to utilize. Um, there's also a mobile app, so if residents are on the go um, and they see a street light outage, they're able to report it quickly. If you would like to contact the Citizens First Center, you can visit ofallon.mo.us or you can call 636-379-5553. And don't forget that you can download the Citizens First mobile app directly to your phone or tablet. Mel and Carol are, are fantastic. Uh, they work well with the uh, customers, the residents. Uh, they're able to answer most questions. Uh, and if they can't get an answer, uh, or if they don't know the answer, they will certainly find the person that can get the answer. We really like to see that our residents are satisfied um, with not only the city staff but also the services and facilities that we have. So it gives us a great sense of pride when we hear feedback from our residents, hey thank you so much for your help or hey the person that you directed me to was really helpful and we got this issue taken care of. So it's really important for us to know that our residents are satisfied. In the future, don't be shy about contacting Citizens First. No matter what kind of celebration you're planning, the O'Fallon Parks and Recreation Department has the facility to meet your needs. The City of O'Fallon's Parks and Recreation Department provides exciting event space that everyone can enjoy. O'Day Lodge and the Crackle Civic Center are new facilities that feature fantastic amenities. And each building is designed to provide maximum enjoyment for guests. Now let's go on a tour and see what these amazing facilities have to offer. Whether you're celebrating a special occasion or hosting an important Use meeting, seminar, city. or unique event, O'Fallon's newest banquet center, O'Day Lodge, offers a state-of-the-art banquet, conference, and meeting facility in a tranquil park setting. O'Day Lodge is conveniently located one mile south of I-64 in O'Day Park. 
The whole vibe of the inside of the building is this nice woodsy vibe. It's kind of a blank canvas where you can make it your own and bring in anything you need to change the venue and make it more modern or make it more rustic. It's kind of up to you. With seating for up to 320 people, a warming kitchen and more, O'Day Lodge offers everything you need to make your event memorable. And with a spacious balcony overlooking the beautiful O'Day Park Amphitheater and some of the most scenic parkland in O'Fallon, your guests will be blown away by the beauty of the location. You can also add the use of O'Day Park's amphitheater at the time of booking. I think the best thing about the amphitheater is that it's this tranquil setting when you're out there. All the trees are full and green and you can't see anything but this beautiful little cove of a park setting where all of your guests and you all can get together and experience this intimate moment and it's a private and natural setting. You can have your ceremony right outside and come straight in for the reception, which is very convenient for you and your guests. It gives you lots of flexibility in your schedule on whether or not you're going to spend all day at your one location or you're going to go out and take pictures in between. It's a great location for that kind of flexible, calm day. Next, we'll travel to the Crackle Civic Center located next to Alligators Creek Aquatic Center. Amenities include a warming kitchen, wireless high-speed internet access, 90-inch televisions, a great presentation sound system, and a personal microphone for speakers. The Crackle Civic Center is a great place to rent because it's got all of these options for you, whether you're going to have a small family event or a large family event. It's a very beautiful, small setting where you all can get together and experience these great amenities at a great price and a great atmosphere. The Kreckle Civic Center, you have a great advantage if you're going to have a smaller event or a larger event. We have three rooms that can be opened up into one large room or three smaller rooms. That's really great for birthday parties, baby showers, bridal showers, and family reunions. We do have the larger space available if you're going to have a charity event or even a wedding at Kreckle. We have great options for those kinds of events. And don't forget that catering is available at both locations. When bringing in a caterer at O'Day Lodge, we do require that you bring in a caterer that is one of our five preferred caterers, and that must be provided for all food and drink, including alcohol. The only exception we have to that rule is a dessert, whether it's a cake, cookie bar, donut bar, anything like that. So at the Crackle Civic Center, you're allowed to bring in your own food and drink, including alcohol. We do allow you to bring in a caterer of your choice, which could be one of the city's five preferred caterers or any caterer in the area that you want to bring in. If you're interested in renting O'Day Lodge or the Crackle Civic Center, you have options. So both the Crackle Civic Center and O'Day Lodge are available for a full day or a half day rental. The half day rentals run 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. And then our full day rentals are 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. We do occasionally allow you to add the extra hour on before your rental or you can add the full day to have full experience with decorating and setting up that day. If you want to find out more details or schedule a tour at O'Fallon's O'Day Lodge or the Crackle Civic Center, you can email Abby at aholmes at o'fallon.mo.us or you can give her a call at 636-379-3288. That's it for today's show. We'll leave you with highlights from a special streets dedication ceremony honoring Charlie Brungies and the late Earl William Drennan. The only thing my grandpa loved as much as his family was being a judge and serving the city of O'Fallon. He would be proud, honored, and humbled if he were here today. Thank you, Mayor Bill Hennessy, the city of O'Fallon, and everyone who made this possible. My family and I sincerely thank you for keeping my grandfather's legacy and memory alive in this town. It was a pleasure for 38 years to sit there and see this city grow from a small rural community to one of the best cities in the United States. Planning and zoning was handed a thousand piece puzzle that they didn't know what the picture was going to look like. And we put it together one single piece at a time. The new Brunges Drive is located by Slumberland Furniture and the recently updated Outer Road project on the south side of Interstate 70 has been renamed Drennan Parkway. Thanks for joining us today and remember to give back to your community because O'Fallon matters to all of us.